What up, B-Squad? It is your boy JB, and we are here today, you guys, with a brand new review for Reasonable Doubt Season 2, episode number 5, you guys. This episode was titled Guilty Until Proven Innocent, you guys. Now, before we do get into the review, if you guys are watching this video or any other videos on the channel and you guys aren't subscribed yet, need you guys to do me a solid favor and stop checking me out on this date. And then have me pay for it at the end of it. You guys know the routine. You can do me that favor by liking the video, subscribing to the channel, turning on your post notifications, and sharing the video. And with that out of the way, without further ado, let us go ahead and discuss reasonable doubt, shall we? All right, you guys. So this episode, it opens up. And so we see Jax. So Jax is in bed with Lewis, right? And Jax is just thinking about everything that she's talked about with Chanel. So she got up from her bed and she went into the, to go to the computer, right? So she's looking at all the pictures that Daniel has taken of Adrian. Meanwhile, Lewis is in the bathroom and Lewis sent a text message to Tony saying that they need to talk. So then the next day we see Jax. So Jax is with Chanel and she showed Chanel the pictures of JT's business partner and asked Chanel, does she know him? And Chanel said, yeah, that's Evan. That's his business partner. And then she told him, like, I don't know a whole lot about him. You know, he's a little shady to her. And so Jax told her that Adrian was spotted with him. And he's the one that picked Adrian up from jail. So Chanel said, yeah, because that's his business partner. That's his business manager, right? But again, she says she doesn't know a whole lot about him, but the vibe that she gets from him is not a good vibe, right? So after that, Jax told her that, you know, she believes that um, uh, she actually she's talking to her. So Jax told her that Adrian took, is the, she believes that Adrian is the one that took out JT and she thinks that Chanel is hiding something, right? So Jax then asked her, are you the one that took out JT? And Chanel said, like, girl, do you have all these questions for your male clients? Oh, that's right. You don't have a whole lot of, you know, do you have the same questions for your other female clients that you do for your, do you, like, do you question your male clients the way you question your female clients, right? And she's like, oh, that's right. You don't have any right. And then she said, when's the last time you defended a black woman? Because you damn sure didn't defend Kalisha, right? And so after that, they were kind of going back and forth, right? And so Jazz was like, here's my thing with you, Chanel. I know that you're lying. And as your attorney, I need to know everything if I'm going to defend you, right? Which we talked about this in a conversation last week. I do, I, I now don't believe that Adrian is the one that took out JT. And I know I saw in the comments where people thought that maybe Sally took out JT, right? I don't even think it's Sally. I, I actually do think it's her daughter that took out her own father, right? And that's because I don't think that, I really honestly don't believe that Sally would do this and let Chanel take the blame for it. Now, I know a lot of people like she put up her house, but I think that she was just trying to help her out. I think Sally may know something. Sally knows more than what she's saying. But you guys let me know what you guys think in the comment section, right? So, after that, Chanel told Jax, like, the only thing I need you to focus on at this point is doing this job and winning this case, right? So then we see Lewis. So Lewis called up his brother Terrence, and Lewis is telling Terrence, you know, hey, um, you know, Tony is pregnant, and he was like, say what? He said, nigga, what? So he told him that, you know, this all came up because of Jax and her case, right? And he said, when you had sex with her, you did use a condom. So Lewis was like, mostly. And I was like, mostly. So you had one on. So either you pulled it off or it, it broke one of the two. And you kept having sex with this woman that ain't your wife without a condom. Mm -mm -mm. Stupid, 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 right? So Terrence told him to find out if the baby is his, right? And so he also asked him, he's like, 
because he, he said he called Tony. Yeah, he was like, what is Tony saved as in your phone? He said, Tony. He was like, dude, like, you need to go into your phone once we hang up, change her name to something more inconspicuous, and stop talking to your mistress. He said, that's not my mistress. So then after that, we see Jax. So Jax is talking to Corey, Daniel, and Crystal, basically telling them her theory that she thinks about Adrian, right? And Corey is thinking to himself, like, he just went on a run with Chanel, so why would he have Chanel go down for a crime that he committed? And I thought about that. I'm like, that does make a little bit of sense, right? But him with this whole Evan character, it it does, it's very shady when you sit and look at it and think about it, right? So Jack showed them that Evan and Adrian are somehow connected to each other, right? So then Crystal, you know, blurted out what her little theory is, right? But Corey says maybe Chanel is telling the truth and her interview is tonight. So he's thinking that the interview is going to garner a lot of sympathy and empathy from people, right? And so once he and Daniel left, you know, Crystal told Jax, like, I believe you. I always, I've learned never to bet against Jax, right? So after that, we see Adrian. So Adrian went to go pay a visit to Evan. And Evan wants the rest of his money. So Adrian told him, like, yo, right now, it's really hard for me to get to Chanel. And if I go to see Chanel, it won't necessarily be a good look. He said, the trial starts in a few weeks. And, you know, she has great attorneys. So once this is all over, we're good. So we find out that, um, you know, they are keeping, well, actually, both of them are keeping secrets, right? We, which we already knew that. But we also find out that they both have dirt on one another. And I was like, hmm. So they kind of shook hands and kind of agreed to just kind of put a pause on things, right? Now, we see Corey. So Corey is talking to Jax, and he told her the trailer um, for the interview at this point is getting traction. She's like, yeah, I know. She's like, there are a lot of reporters that have been reaching out to me. So he asked her, like, what reporters? And she was like, you know, this person, this person from CBN. And so... uh Corey told her, hey, I know that this is your friend, right? But basically, he wants her to pretty much check her feelings. And Jax, however, still wants to explore the option of, you know, finding out who actually took out JT. And honestly, I think if, if Jax goes down this rabbit hole, she's going to find something that ain't going to really be the best look, right? But that's neither here nor there. Now, after that, we see Jackson Lewis. So they were watching the trailer, right? And he asked her if she talked to Tony. She said, no, I haven't talked to Tony, but I'm pretty sure that I'll see her in a carpool lane, right? And she has absolutely no idea what to say to Tony. So Jax told Lewis, you know, and it's not even Tony that I'm worried about. It's Chanel and the fact that she needs, she can't be honest with me. And Lewis was like, well, maybe she was scared to tell you the truth. And so his phone started ringing, and I was like, that ain't nobody but Tony. And she was like, damn, it's a hotline over there. And she's like, he's like, oh, it's work. She's like, you can answer it? So he answered the phone, and Lewis, I'm like, dude, the look on your face just screams guilty and, and whatnot. And then the way he was talking, I'm like, you sound super nervous. Like, come on, come on, dude. Like, <laughs> what are we doing here? But when he answered the phone, she was like, she must be there because the way he was talking, he was like, yep. And so he, he hung up the phone with her. So then after that, um, we see as um, we're at the law office. And so they're talking about the um, the trailer, the, the interview, right? So they did a focus group and there were some people who said that they didn't see the, the um, interview, but about 36 million people watched it. And then they were talking about what the social media presence is and how black women and women in general are on Chanel's side. But then you still have men who are siding with JT, which is not a shocking to me, but hey, it is what it is, right? So Jax asked Corey, like, you got your opening statement prepared, right? He said, yeah. She's like, do you want me to go over it? He was like, no, we good. We're good. So then we see Lucy, and she's at a cafe, and I guess this was her boss who came in, basically saying to her, you know, initially when you gave the charges, 
I thought that it was a little bit, you know, excessive, right? But then when Chanel ran, that's when he started to agree with her. So he told her that this can't be another repeat of the Braden Miller case, right? So after that, we are in court. And so we see um, Lucy as she is giving her opening statement. And in her opening statement is basically her saying that they're going to prove that this was premeditated, that Chanel orchestrated everything to take JT out, even to make it look as if she was being physically abused by him to use that whole, I was an abused woman defense, right? So then Corey got up and gave up his opening. And his opening is basically to paint the picture that Chanel was an abused woman. Her husband was a super powerful you know, um, football player with money, status, and access. And that is what he used to keep her, you know, keep her. And then she finally got the courage to leave him. So we get to this, so we get on the stand, right? First up was a, the medical examiner and a police detective, right? So both sides were painting their stories because the thing was they were talking about the fact that JT was hit from the back of the head as if he was walking away, right? Then they um, also talked about the fact that, well, he was strangling Chanel. So there was Chanel's skin was under his nails, right? So both sides are painting painting the picture that, hey, court defense is painting the picture that um, that Chanel was being abused, right? And the prosecution, the prosecution, are they're painting the picture that Chanel was um, Chanel was the um, aggressor, which again, okay. I guess here's the thing. I can see where they're coming from. And I can see where they're coming from, honestly. It's just gonna it's just gonna it's gonna depend on how the jury sees this. It really is. So then we see Lewis. So Lewis is talking to Spencer about a school that he can switch to, right? And he can switch to it immediately. Now I was looking at Lewis a little funny style, and I was like, hmm. What's the reason for you wanting to move him this to a, it's an it's a art school too, right? But Lewis says that he wants to move him there just because of the fact that he wasn't so supportive of him when he told him he wanted to do Hamilton, right? So we got that. Now, Jax, we see as um, outside of the courtroom, Jax was giving an interview. And so Corey came up to her like, wait a minute, I thought that, remember, this is my case. So why are you giving the interview? And she was like, well, because you weren't here and they needed to speak to somebody. So I just stepped in on your behalf. Right. And she basically hit him with like, get out your feelings. So we see as Jax is at home and she's talking to Naima. So we found out from Naima that her mom has a new boyfriend and just like, what's his name? So she told her what his name is. And Naima was like, she doesn't like him. And so Jax was like, has he done anything to you? She's like, no. She's like, then why don't you like him? And she says, because she misses Grandpa Paul. So then after that, we see Corey. So Corey was in his office and two of the partners came, wanted to take him out for a drink. And he was like, mm, can't go out for a drink. But so he took them out for cigars. So they're talking about, you know, talking about Jackson, what a good lawyer she is, you know, how good she is. Right. But they wish she was more amendable. And I was like, excuse you <laughs> i was like excuse you so y'all want her to be never mind so they told corey that if he closes the case that he has a promising future at the firm so we see as jacks called her mother up and she was asking her about the guy so his name is kevin and her mama told him you know i went to take some stuff down to the local shelter by my house met him there her mama told her, you know what, Jack, Jacqueline, I'm happy. And it's best for you to be happy for me. So then the partners called Jacks into their into the um board into the big boardroom, right? And they basically told her to let Corey lead and to make him shine. <laughs> I ugh, I did not like that conversation with her and them two white men. But that's neither here nor there. 
You guys tell me what you think and feel in the comment section below. So after this, Daniel is telling Jax that when it comes down to Evan, Evan is pretty clean when it comes to being on paper, but he can dig further, but it'll just take some time. And she was like, no, don't worry about it. I'll have Crystal make an appointment with his office. So we see it's Jackson Lewis there at therapy, and you know, they're talking about how good things are going in their relationship currently. And, you know, she did say how she didn't like the fact that he presented school to Spencer without having a conversation with her. And it makes him like a good parent if she were to say no, right? And she just wants him to, you know, just talk to her, don't surprise her. And he was like, you know what? I got you. And he apologized, right? And so the, the therapist asked about trust, right? He's saying that, you know, he's starting to trust Jax a little bit more. So the therapist said, how do you feel about how about Lewis? She's like, I've always trusted Lewis. I was like, girl, you're going to regret saying that in a little bit once you find out that he banged Tony and that he may be Tony's baby daddy. Speaking of Tony, we see him meet up with Tony, who had a little bit of an attitude. I was like, ma'am, you the one out there. Girl, you. Oh, my God. <laughs> you had sex with two married men. Lewis and JT. You can find that now, man, that was single. That that may not have gone back to their wife. Tony, girl, you, you, mm -mm, Tony, girl, I don't see it for you. I don't see it for you. I don't see it for you. So, um, Lewis is talking to her, basically saying, asking her about a DNA test. She said, don't worry. It's not your baby. He said, did you have a test done? She said, no. She said, because JT is deceased and the only person who wants his baby is me. So we're good. I was like, Lewis, ask that, a, never mind. ask that lady for a DNA test. So next up, we see Jax, Sally, and Autumn. So they're having dinner, right? And so Sally is talking about how she's read some of the negative comments on social media about Chanel, basically saying, you know, Chanel chose that man and whatever the, you know, whatever consequences she, you know, gets, she has to deal with it because of choosing that bad man. And I was like, excuse me? So Jax let them know that, you know, Chanel is mad at her because she thinks she's lying. And Autumn agreed with all the stuff that Chanel has done. And, and I, you know, I get it, right? That's Sally's cousin. Sally don't want to think the worst of a cousin. But girl, your cousin ran and your house is now not about to be your house because you put your house up for her bail. Like she's, and she, she, I mean, your cousin was lying. So let's be real about the situation. Do I think she did it to JT after last week's episode? No, she didn't do it, but she's, she is protecting someone, which again, I think is her daughter. I don't think it's Sally. I don't think it's Sally, but Sally got pissed off and walked off from them. So then we move over to the, we're back at the courthouse, right? We're in the courtroom and JT's mom has taken the stand, right? And she's talking about how JT was so helpful to these people that people would do this for homeless people and all that kind of stuff. I was like, you do know that people, they treat other people better sometimes than the people in their homes and in their lives, right? So Lucy had her read a text message and the text message basically said that she and her son were going to pay for the way they treated her. Then Chanel turned around and looked and noticed that her daughters were in the courtroom and she got pissed off. Then she got pissed off because Lucy was asking her if Chanel had ever been, if she knew about the abuse from Chanel. She said, nope, never knew anything about it. And Chanel was like, you are, you are lying. You're effing lying. Like, so she got pissed off and they had to call a recess. So when they called a recess, Corey was talk, telling Chanel, like, Chanel, you got to calm down. And Chanel was like, it was her who gave me the damn sunglasses to put over my, you know, to cover my black eyes. Also, when, when she said that Chanel didn't, you know, she didn't know anything about the abuse. I noticed that the camera made a, made a point to focus on his mother and her facial expression, she had a smirk on her face. I was like, you knew you was lying. And Chanel was pissed off that her daughters were there. And, you know, Jax was like, once 
you know, Lucy, not Lucy, but once his mom comes off the stand, I forgot what her name is, but once she comes off the stand, she's going to ask that the girls be removed from, you know, from there, right? And so Chanel also mentioned that he repeated a cycle that was with his with his mom. So I don't know. I don't know how many kids his mama has, but Corey went back in there and, you know, brought it up to the court that she had burned one of her. She had burned her son. I don't know if this is JT or if she has another kid, but she abused one of her kids. And she said it was an accident. Girl, how do you accidentally burn a child with a cigarette? I'm just asking that question. My mama smoked for years and she ain't never accidentally burned me. Never. So we see as Jackson went to go meet Evan. And so his security was in there and she was questioning him about, about the security. And he gave her some bogus answer, right? But then she asked him what he does. And he, she, he was telling her, but then she also asked him about Adrian being a client. He said, well, these days he's more of an associate, right? And so he got up and because he, he said he had something to do. And he told one of his associates, have the car ready in five. So after that, we see him and he's talking, he went to go see Chanel at the jail, right? And he told he's telling Chanel that he can help her win her case. And he's, you know, he's saying because he wants his money. And Chanel's like, I don't have your money. He said, Well, that's not what Adrian told me. And he was like, Oh, I'm assuming he didn't tell you. So after that, we see as Daniel is talking to Jax, telling Jax about this company. So this company, it is a gambling thing overseas, right? Where they get retired, they get athletes who are retired to recruit other athletes to help them. It actually kind of sounds like a Ponzi scheme. It sounds like a Ponzi scheme. He also may have mentioned that, you know, Adrian deposited some money to them last week. So she wants for Adrian to find, not for Adrian, she wants for Daniel to find Adrian. Daniel also let her know that her mom's boyfriend is a good guy. So after that, we see Adrian. So Adrian went to go see Evan, who was pissed. He's pissed off, right? Because Evan done spilled all the beans to Chanel. And so Chanel called Adrian. And so he says, well, now that she knows everything, now I'll get my money. And so Adrian told him, like, if you ever go near her again, I would hate to bury another friend. So Evan told him, like, her attorney came to see me and she needs to be contained. And, you know, Adrian's like, I'm not, I'm, I can't do that. Like, you got all these dudes around you, the security. Why don't you have them handle it? And so Evan told him, like, once it's done, you and I are done. So Jax, we see her as she went down to the cigar bar where Corey is. And she asked him, like, what did you say to the partners? Because they called themselves reprimanding me. He said, all I told him was how difficult you are to work with, right? He's like, you know, you brought me into this case to help with Chanel. And... She told him how dismissive she feels he is because she is friends with Chanel and they were able to, you know, they, she's like, can we just have be root for everybody who's black? They agreed to do that. And so he asked her, you know, since we cool, Brayden, did that nigga really do it? And I was like, she was like, she didn't say anything to him. Right. So after that, we see Spencer. So Spencer got his, um, his welcome packet from the school. Jax is telling Lewis that her mom's new boyfriend checks out. And then we see them getting it in. And you could look, you could see the look on his face and he was not into it. And so he got up and went into the bathroom, I guess, after they finished, he texts Tony and told Tony he needs to know. So after that, we see Jax. So Jax is in the office and she got a call from Adrian to be at Chanel's house, which, she was she thought it was a little odd and Daniel was like you don't think that someone should go with you she was like no adrian's cool she was like but he was like but you think that he's the one that took out jt she was like you know what in that case why don't you come with me but follow behind me and every six minutes or so if you don't hear anything from me alert the police so we see her as she got over to chanel's house and adrian is sitting in the living room he has a picture in his hand. So Jax comes in and he stands up and you can see a gun in his, in, in a, you know, in his pants right behind him. And he said, we need to talk. And that is where the episode ended, you guys. Now, let me know what you guys thought about this episode in the comments below. Subscribe to the channel. 
turn on your post notifications and share the video. Until the next time, guys, stay safe, take care of yourselves, wash your hands, be blessed, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.